This is section 512. We're still in the chapter inverses and logarithms, but we're going to use a graph to determine an inverse. And so the things we should be able to do at this end of this lesson is understand that inverse graphs reflect over this line y equals x. So remember, if it forms that reflection and creates symmetry, that means if you fold it over that line, they should overlap. And then we're going to graph an inverse function from an already graphed function. So in our previous lesson, one of the statements that I made was for us to find the inverse function, we're going to switch that x and that y value. That implied that we switch the domain and range. So we're going to take all the x's and all the y's and we're going to switch them. And we kind of found that out in the activity that we did in class as well. So for example, let's just say if I had this function and there are my x values and that my y values, immediately I can say that my inverse function, all I have to do is just switch the x and y's. And so notice the 4 and 1 swapped, the 5 and 2 swapped, and the 6 and 2 swapped. So now let's take a look at a graph. Let's just say if I wanted to actually go through and graph this. And so consider this relation of f. So this is uh, a special type of or a relation is anything that you know x and y is together or relating two things together. But I'm just calling this relation f. And if I wanted to graph it, I would just plot these given points here. So here's the 2, 4, 1, uh, negative 1, 3, and negative 2, 0. So I have those three dots. Well, the inverse, all I did is switch the x and y's, right? So switched, switched, switched. And then I can plot these values, so like 4, negative 2, or sorry, 4, positive 2, uh, 3, negative 1, and 0, negative 2. Now notice, if I draw on this line, that line is y equals x. It looks like if I were to fold my graph over that line, those dots will overlap. All inverse functions have this type of symmetry. All inverse functions have this type of symmetry. That's really important. So if you have the original and its inverse and you were to plot them both, they will always have that type of symmetry. Now for us to find that inverse graph, I mean obviously you could find the inverse algebraically, plug the algebra that function in, that's fine. But what if I wanted to find that inverse graph from just an already, like I gave you a graph and that's what you wanted to find. So you would draw the original graph and you would use an xy table to help you, right? Remember we plug in values for x and we get our y's. It helps us to draw in that line of symmetry, y equals x. And then we're going to switch the x and y values to start drawing our inverse. So let's look at an example. Let's say if I had y equals x squared plus 2. So I want to draw the original. Now I use Desmos to kind of help it here. This is just to save some time. But notice I created a table. I picked x and y values. So I just started picking them. And here we go. There are my y values after plugging in the x values. Then I just took them and I plot them on the graph. Right, so I had 0, 2, here's negative 1, 3, here's negative 2, 6, 1, 3, and 2, 6. Then drawing in that line of symmetry, so that's y equals x, this is going to help us imagine how this is going to reflect over. So now in my new table, I want to switch my x and y values. So switch these, just switch the places. And so that's how I'm going to get 6, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 2, 0, 3, 1, and 6, 2, right? I just switched that, and that's how I got that. Now I can take those points and plot them. So I have 2, 0. I have 3, uh, 1, and 3, negative 1. I have 6, 2, and 6, negative 2. And then now I can trace it. Now notice it creates that type of symmetry. right? If I were to fold it over that line y equals x, it created that level of symmetry. Now one thing to note here, 
what I just drew is actually not a function. So just know that this would be the inverse equation and not an inverse function. If I were to try and find my inverse, that is not, I would not be able to use that function notation for that. I wouldn't be able to say f inverse of x. I wouldn't be able to use that notation because it's not a function. The original is, but the inverse isn't. Now this next example, I just wanted to use it to show I, did, I went through the same exact process. This is the original. I found those dots. There's my y equals x. I did the same thing here. I just created a table. What I want you guys to do is kind of go ahead and pause it and practice that. Help practice create the table. Right Here's the original. Create your, y, uh, your x, y table with that find the inverse xy table you should match up with these points here and then notice the reason why I drew in that y equals x because this shape is kinda crazy or kinda weird to draw but having that line there makes it so much easier I can like oh okay so if it's going down here and almost approaching this line that means that if it reflects over here so it should be approaching this way and so it almost has that same shape, right? I mean, I can't draw it perfectly, but it's close enough. So it's just going to help, but always put in that y equals x line because it'll help us visualize it. Now I want you guys to practice this one. Okay, this is going to use a little bit of what we did yesterday and a little bit of what we did today. And now it's going to be similar to this, right? x cubed minus 1. So it's going to be, that's kind of like my hint for you. But go ahead and pause the video here. I want you guys to go ahead and practice this. All right, so let's go over it. So on part A, to find the formula of events if it's inverse, remember we're going to switch the x and y, and we're going to get y by itself. So subtract 2 on both sides, cube root both sides, y is by itself, use my inverse notation because this is a function still. And so that right there is going to answer A. That is the formula for my inverse. Then I want to graph the function. So the original x cubed plus 2, let's create an xy table. Plug in values. I just plugged in these values for or uh, created these values for x. I just tried negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Plugged in negative 2, plugged in negative 1, plugged in 0, plugged in 1, plugged in 2. Switched them. So here's my original. right? If I draw on that line, it's going to help me trace and draw that next one. And so you should have that shape. Now that's a little bit more zoomed in, obviously. But just know if you zoomed out, these points would be represented as well, some of the missing points. So concluding our lesson. What line are inverses symmetric over? They are symmetric over the equation y equals x. What do we swap to help us graph an inverse? We are going to switch the x and y values. Remember, when we find that inverse, you're switching the x and y values. That's part of its definition. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments.